So for the connection between S2 and S3, I'll start with S3. On both switches, I'll be using ports Fast Ethernet 21 through 24. Those will be the four switch ports that we'll be using on either side. So I'll go straight away into S3. Set the host name. Create my VLANs. I don't have any hosts connected to any other switch ports, so I don't need to put any of the other switch ports into a VLAN. So right away, what I'll do is, I'll say interface range F0 slash 21 dash 24. So I'll go into all four switch ports, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Channel group, we'll give it the number two. Type mode and then put a question mark. And this time we're gonna do PAGP, Port Aggregation Protocol. And there's two modes here that we're interested in, desirable and auto. So desirable is the one we'll use on S3. And then auto, so this is essentially like active in LACP, desirable is similar, and then auto is, is the basically the passive one. So I'll use desirable. So mode desirable. I'll take a look at the running configuration just to take a peek. You can see here port 21 mode desirable, port 22, 22 mode desirable, 22 mode desirable, 23, 24. If I scroll down to the bottom you can see that we now have an interface port channel 2 which is our logical interface, our virtual interface for this ether channel. So now I'll go into interface port channel 2, turn it into a trunk, and allow the VLANs that I want allowed. VLAN 10, 20. Go back to the running configuration, take a look at it one more time, and you can see that the configurations went across. All right, excellent. So now I'll go back to S2 and do the same thing on S2. On S2, interface range F0 slash 21 dash 24. Channel group 2, mode, and this time it is auto. The interfaces all go down and then up. Port channel 2 changed state to up. Now I can go into my port channel interface, turn it into a trunk, and then set the VLANs. Show ether channel. How about just port channel? There we go. Port channel 1, port channel 2, PAGP. The ports that are involved. So now that we have that done, it's time to do the last Ether channel connection between S1 and S3. For the final Ether channel bundle, or port channel between S1 and S3, I'll start with S3 and then configure S1. We're going to be using Ethernet ports 17 to 20, and instead of using LACP or PAGP, we're just going to do a manual Ether channel configuration. To do this, we just set both sides of the link to the on state. I'll show you how that's done. I'll go into S3, interface range, F0 slash 17 to 20. This will be 
our third channel group. So I'll title it channel group three mode, put a question mark, and you can see that we have the choice of on. Enable ether channel only, meaning no protocol that's communicating back and forth maintaining the channel just just on. So we'll say mode on. I'll go to look at my running configuration and I should now have a port channel 3. There it is, interface port channel 3. We'll need to configure that also as a trunk with the allowed VLANs. So I'll do that next. Set it to a trunk. And then allow the VLANs. Now I'll do a similar thing, the exact same thing, on S1. On S1, port 17 to 20, channel group 3, mode on. Beautiful. Interface, port channel 3, set it to a trunk, and then allow VLANs 10 and 20. You can see that we have compatibility. 17 to 20 is compatible with port channel members. Show, show ether channel. We have group one and group three on S1. So now if I was to lose both links here, we'll test this out, get rid of both of these links. So that's gone. I should be able to ping now across here. So we'll try it out. Oh, there we go. Finally got a reply here from Packet Tracer. You can see that it's working. So now I'll put the links back between S1 and S2, gigabit 01 to 01 and 02 to 02. And now all of our ether channels are back up. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how come I can't just put redundant links from switch one to switch two and from all these switches, how come I just can't use redundant links and have that work? Why do we need ether channel? And if you ask that question, that would be a good question. You could say, well, hey, I, I, I'm putting redundant links and uh, I should be getting double the bandwidth, right? Well, if I bring up the file the beginning file before we did all of the ether channel configurations and I have it here so let me show it to you here it is you'll see that a lot of these blinking lights are orange well they're orange because that's spanning tree protocol working so if you remember when you put redundant links between two switches it forms a loop and spanning tree protocol sees the loop and shuts down or blocks one of the ports it puts one of the ports into a blocking mode so as to not have a loop. So right now we have redundant links between, let's say, S1 and S2 here. We have the two links, but one of them's shut down, so we don't really have double the bandwidth from S1 to S2. We just have a uh, fault tolerance or redundancy built in in case one of the links was to go bad, then STP would go in and, and unblock this link, and then we'd have... Uh, we'd have a successful link again, but we don't have double the bandwidth. So what Ether Channel does is it treats both links as one link, and therefore um, we don't have a loop because Ether Channel sees them both as one link. Now, what Ether Channel will do though, Ether Channel does work with STP. So once we have Ether Channel configured, and here we have Ether Channel configured, Ether Channel will go in and it will block one of the port channels um, because we have in this scenario if it treats 
all of these links as one, so this is one bundle, and this is one bundle, and this is one bundle, we still have a loop, but the loop is at the port channel level. And so we still have a scenario where um, STP will work with these port channels and will block one of the port channels. And since this is the fastest connection, the bundle with two gigabit links, the um, one of the ports that's blocked is probably maybe uh, these ports here on S1 or maybe these ports here on S3. And we could go in and take a look and see. So I'll go into S1 and I'll type enable and show span and we'll see if we can figure out how spanning tree sees the ether channel. So it looks like everything here is in forwarding mode including PO1 and PO3, those are the port channels. So I'll go into S3 now and do a show span for show spanning tree. And you can see that port channel 3 is in blocking mode. So spanning tree protocol has treated the port channel 3 interface as one link, one virtual link, and has it in blocking mode. So right now, we're blocking on port channel 3 right here. So it looks as if they're green. And the reason they look green is because um, we're running multiple VLANs, so we have multiple instances of spanning tree protocol. And so the lights are all showing green. But in fact, we have these switch ports right here blocking so right now, and they're thereby uh, closing the loop or disabling the loop in the network. So spanning tree protocol works with ether channel is still working, but now it's working at the port channel level.